Good morning and welcome to our ongoing series of Going Digital. Uh, I am Hemendra Alawalia. I am the founder and CEO of Minervian Consulting. Uh, I basically help organizations with digital transformation activities. Today, we have a very interesting session to talk about a key aspect of CTO success, which is about business technology collaboration in the realm of product development. The context here is that there are indeed many a slip between the cup and the lip as far as successful product is concerned. CTO organizations are challenged to cover various aspects with a focus on the need for effective collaboration between product management and software development. While processes may be helpful, technical and collaborative impediments are often not given its due diligence. The difficulties encountered in making successful products also are relevant to successful digital transformation in, in small or large measures. Digital transformation is seldom out of the box. To overcome these challenging situations, we will delve deeper with my two guests today, Srinivas Chilara and Nirmalaya Sengupta from Swan Speed Consulting. Srinivas has had wide experience in software systems development, having worked in various roles, domains, countries, styles of functioning, programming languages, and platforms for over two decades. He's a postgraduate in information systems engineering from the University of Reading and has honed his skills in software development and data analytics. In particular, his expertise lies in forecasting and quantitative anomaly detection. Nirmala has spent about three decades in the software industry, all of it in software product development environments in India and Europe. He has played various roles from developer to principal engineer to architecting technologist over all these years. He's still a hands-on programmer even today. So with that, I'm going to start with Srinivas with you. Uh, introduce Swan Speed briefly. First of all, thank you very much for uh, you know uh, providing this opportunity uh, to uh, you know, expound our views on 10 TD and thank you uh, uh, Heminder for uh, giving your time as well. Uh, so uh, about a swan speed, very, uh, very briefly, it would be an advisory uh, consulting company. We advise on how to achieve success uh, in the realm of software. Uh, and uh, maybe we also do crucial bits uh, for our clients, uh, the tricky bits, what we call non-trivial software. That's, that's one way to think about it. Uh, also, as a part of advisory, we, uh, because of our tools, our knowledge of tools, by tools I'm using the word very generally, and platforms and languages, we are able to uh, tell people how these tools can actually expand what they can do, what is actually possible. Uh, and as a part of that, uh, we will be able to sometimes uh, even influence and shape business strategy. So that is in brief what, what Swan Speed does. Right. And how did the name Swan Speed come about? I mean, what's, what's, because the name is so interesting and uh, it would be nice to hear from you how you coined this word together. Well, uh, we we have as consultants seen lots of projects, uh, participated as advisory, and we have done lots of projects. And we see often people uh, sort of running around uh, with a uh, with a lot of with, there's a lot of stress unnecessarily in our view because some basic things are not done. So Swan Speed, uh, the term uh, is a bit of contradiction there. Swan is supposed to uh, embody grace. So I think we can achieve a lot in a graceful manner uh, while executing projects. We are mostly on the execution side, right? We advise, but advise for execution. Um, and uh, well, it, it can still be with a certain amount of speed that's possible. Uh, and the other way to think about it is, you know, there's this uh, understanding that swans, they look very placid yeah. on, uh, on the lakes, but maybe below the water they are paddling furiously. Well, uh, we won't tell you what exactly we are doing, but hopefully it's all graceful. So that's, oh, that's how the name came about. Yeah, that's a very interesting name. It's a combination of uh, elegance and speed, right? So yes, that's I think the it's, thought. Uh, it's beautifully put together. How do you provide your services, Srinivas? Services, do, yeah. uh, they are usually at three levels. Uh, so the 
the thing that we pride ourselves most on is the advisory bit because we have a range of experience, a combination of depth and breadth uh, across the software industry. There, there are other partners as well, and all of them have got remarkable experience. So all put together, in most situations, we will be able to provide really good uh, information, insights, and ability to you know translate that into something tangible as results. Uh, when we do that. Um, first step is to tell people, you know, study what is there and tell. So the, uh, at, we provide a service at three levels, tell, uh, show and do. Show is in some uh, particularly tricky aspects or non-standard, non-trivial aspects. Uh, we provide uh, proof of concepts or even actually do the implementation bit for that slice, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then we could work with the client on the do side but typically uh, we engage other partners from our side or the client side to get most of the rest of the project done. So so what percent uh, of your services, uh, Srinas, would you say is the tell part, the show and the do? The tell part is typically about 60 to 70 percent uh, in terms of our effort and so on. Uh, but in terms of value, that could be even more. Uh, in terms of uh, show it is the remaining most let's say 30 percent only a small part is actually do we have actually implemented and done uh, yeah. projects earlier but they were in uh, uh, you know very limited context so we have done that uh, most of it is advisory maybe i can add um, a, an explanation here uh, because when we are talking about advisory we are not advising our clients and customers on what to do for their business. It's not advising on business strategy or even digital transformation directions. It is how to go about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes clients, they don't realize, they don't realize, they, they don't know what they don't know, right? So they don't realize that a certain, a certain part of the project requires very special uh, capabilities, which are difficult to make out whether people know or not. Uh, so we we tell them how to go about it there. All right, wonderful. I'm going to shift gears. Nirmala, I'm going to come to you now. Um, what does Swanspeed do? Uh, first of all, thank you again, Aminder, uh, for organizing this. Uh, in short, in Swanspeed, we are equipped to become a CTO's extended office. Uh, we are well equipped also to bridge the gap that we have seen to be existing between the product side and the engineering side. And we do this by suggesting technology stack, supplementing the technology strategy, as well as helping in milestoning, because the milestones are important for the final success. And finally, we also give very crucial guidance about about implementation approach that their engineering team is going to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would be the areas you focus on primarily? Uh, we try to cover both the breadth and the depth, of course. So let me have to have the breadth first. In the, uh, when I say breadth, I essentially mean that we can do uh, systemic analysis of the whole software in totality as well as going to depth of the, in, in, in the crucial parts of the application. We also uh, are the sounding board for any kind of tech discussions. We are also uh, very good at rapid prototyping because an architecture can be proven to be worthwhile when it is rapidly prototypable. Uh, we can do that. Uh, and of course, our data analytics is very result oriented, not theory oriented. As far as depth is concerned, yeah, we are, uh, our experience is mostly on the server side, deep stack building, with which is closely associated areas like uh, architecture design and of course, even coding. We, we are hands on coder even now. And most importantly, we are uh, positioning ourselves as people who are extremely skilled at forecasting 
and quantitative anomaly detection. So that's the other areas of the depth that we go to. All right, and um, Nimaya, I mean, you know, in today's rapidly advancing digital world, there are many such organizations, right, that are offering, you know, services, be it consultative, be it advisory, uh, in, in all aspects of software product development. Um, if you were to, if I were to ask you, what are your key differentiators? Uh, how are you different from others? How are you different from competition? Uh, how would you address that? First of all, excellent question. Uh, this must be answered. And I understand that we are one of the many, but we are confident that we bring in some differentiators. So give me a minute to enumerate them. First is that we bring in ideas, notions, points of views to the table of any kind of technical or a semi-technical discussion, which are synthesized from our years of experience of building software from grounds up. Uh, the grounds up is the operative word here. Um, we have developed solutions for various areas of application. So the variety matters here. Number three, we are very hands-on uh, we still write code every day almost. And what that means is that we can relate to what problems are the technology team facing and what sort of answers make them comfortable. Uh, this, is, this is one value proposition that we have. And fourth and finally, collectively in Swan Speed, we have exposure to various professional and social settings. By that I mean even multicultural workplaces uh, from people from uh, various linguistic uh, uh, backgrounds. And finally, uh, across continents, because that also matters uh, in our experience. Wonderful. You know, my experience with companies that want to digitally transform is that after understanding and putting their thoughts together, to form a great digital business strategy, which is the work I do through Minervian, they're often clueless on where to start, you know, when it comes to becoming a data-driven enterprise. And today, you know, everybody's talking about data and and that's a uh, such a confusing word, you know, or, or set of words, you know, data-driven. Um, how, how can you help there? How does Swan Speed, you know, uh, address this, uh, this point and where can you help? Enterprises. The word data driven is loaded and very frequently very misused, um, mm. rather lazily used, is what I would say. When being when when someone says data driven, the idea is to be uh, objective. So any business decision should be based upon what the data tells. Now the assumption here is that the data is correct. Data is uh, fungible. Data can be processed in the way that we want. Now, this correctness of the data is often lost aspect of this whole story. So because of our background in the server side programming, where, which is where the data is generated and stored and brought in and processed, and, and uh, our focus on the numeric side of the data, we can marry these two things very well. Uh, so when, when someone says data driven, uh, we will possibly ask the client the first question, which data? And possibly the second question would be where they are stored. And thirdly, how much trust do you have on the data that you have collected? Uh, these, these questions actually begin the whole discussion being which data must be used for the analytics and from there, the business decisions. Sinas, over to you. Uh, what are the challenges companies face with product development? <laughs> this this is a, uh, maybe a small question, but it will lead to a very long answer. I'll try yeah. to keep it brief. Uh, so essentially, uh, at one level, uh, it is a problem with alignment. Okay, Someone would like a product to be made. They have an idea. And that could be, usually it starts with one person, but then it could be a small group of people, which is the product management. Uh, but typically they don't they don't build it themselves it happens uh, if you think about some very early startups uh, the famous ones and even the not so i won't say infamous ones but 
even the mm-hmm. not so well known ones as there are founders who are actually they do it there it is one that's one thing but when a organization becomes a big bit larger and in many other contexts not if not startups in other places uh, product management doesn't actually implement so which means they have to talk to a different set of people right. and that collaboration um is often uh, you know not not smooth and this is not for want of trying but it actually is a question of people with different backgrounds having different world views who you know find it difficult to see things uh, put themselves in the other person's shoe so that is one place where we bring in uh, our views and again it's not uniform it is not uniform what i mean is if the product development um, product sorry product management people want to uh, let's say put uh, you know implement let's say some 10 different features not all the features are easy equally easy or equally time consuming or uh, to mm-hmm. build and that is something they don't quite understand you know? mm-hmm. so that is one example the other thing within the um, where we also play a big role is within the uh, development group itself and i'm using this word development very carefully most people right. for development they think coding but, but as far as i'm concerned and as far as we are concerned in small scale uh, development is once we are told what to build or someone is told they have to build the whole thing test it make sure things are okay um, so the testing and programming bits uh people who do that their collaboration also has lots of gaps and this is a his- historically this has been a problem absolutely yeah some companies have got over it but they are very far and few in between the number so that's there are these are two places right yeah i think i think collaboration uh, you rightly you know said the right word because that's where uh, things start to break down and you know yes. got these various departments uh, many of them you know they are wanting to collaborate but because of differences in 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 the way they operate maybe cultural differences within the organizations yeah. uh, often things you know break down and i think that's where you come in and you're able to bridge that gap what value uh, can you bring to your what value do you bring to your clients can you give some specific examples through swan speed consulting uh i i will give examples uh, but a value in in the sense that we give uh, critical uh, service side um, expertise like heavy duty service side expertise in terms of uh, architecting and designing and building the system uh not necessarily hosting it and getting it operational we of course are there to help clients do that but we don't make things operational that way um then we uh, because of our viewpoints and our uh, deeper knowledge uh we are able to uh make sure that clients avoid very expensive mistakes it is mm-hmm. quite well known people spend 6 months a year and then they find that what they've implemented is actually not fit for purpose the other thing is um we bring an out out of the box outside the box view um so that is as external consultants we often bring different views right so these are these are values uh in terms of examples uh in fact our website has it uh, there was a product uh, i mean still is a product company uh, they actually uh, are serving mostly indian uh, corporates uh, for a certain internal financial um, tracking application and uh, they had been building this product for a long time uh, so it was basically a monolithic piece of software uh, they was quite successful but uh, over the last three four years as their business expanded they need to uh, serve more customers they found that it is difficult to go with this monolithic software and keep implementing it in each each client it was fine when they had a dozen clients but when it is 100 clients they can't reach so they have to get it to sort of cloud ready but you can't easily do it if you have got one big ball of mud i mean uh, it's a bit unfair maybe but one monolithic piece of software so we help break it down and rearchitect parts of it so that's that's one example uh, then we do a lot of assessments uh, companies often before they embark on something or while while they started working on some initiative which is again non standard they have a sense that oh, we we need some kind of advice because there is a lot of fog uh, mm-hmm. so we we do assessments in terms of uh, 
the tools they're using, the software, or if you if companies want to buy software or they want to employ some open source software, which is again not so common, uh, we can do assessments for them, including processes. So we have done that for a um, couple of very big companies. Uh, then there's uh, finally there's a company that was a startup. This was around they they wanted to build a simple uh, it's platform but a simple platform for restaurants. So restaurants uh, and this was just before the COVID time actually right. uh, and into the COVID time as well. Uh, so this basically it is uh, using iPads or tablets. Uh, restaurants can place uh, you know create very high quality menus. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's not just menus what is there on the what do you call on there uh, what's served by the restaurant but also very high quality pictures maybe even some videos maybe even messages from the chefs uh, so mm-hmm. they wanted to build this platform they had funding uh, but you know they ran through several rounds of funding uh, and they they really then they came to us and we helped them uh, reformulate the way they worked with their partners but we, but that's the, the the management and setting part, right? The process mm-hmm. part, you know, right. how they need to deal with. Me. But that won't solve their problem in total because they still needed that uh, that platform and application to come up properly. So another partner of us, he actually went to Delhi and sat down and he just uh, fixed a lot of things uh, then and there. It's like a project rescue. And then because of the restructuring the project and the de- dealings with other vendors, software vendors, mm-hmm. uh, they could sustain it. Interesting, interesting. And what type of clients would typically sign up to work with you? So broadly, there are two types: who, uh, the software development and tech firms, uh, where you know when they are building uh, products, uh, we help them uh, in several ways, like I uh, outlined earlier. Uh, then uh, in the non-tech firms, it could be we are currently mostly uh, targeting uh, retail and energy uh, clients, uh, supply chain management, uh, people like that, because they, that ties into our uh, one area of expertise of forecasting and anomaly detection. So that these are roughly the types of clients. They are usually um, medium-sized clients, but even very large clients have we have mm-hmm. one very last clients too. Uh, what geographies do you primarily focus on? Uh, well, uh, currently it is mostly mostly India. We would like to also uh, look at uh, maybe Southeast Asia, the Australia and Europe. I mean, that, this is also because, you know, we uh, a little bit of time difference is good. Yes. Too much is something that maybe we don't, we don't want. Uh, so that's, these are the geographies. And, you know, with rapid technology advances and product development, how do you see Swan Speed keeping up or staying ahead of its times? Actually, as far as technology advances are concerned, you know, that is not how it feels. We, we get asked this question sometimes, but this is not how it feels to us. So if you know the basics really well, and a bunch of us, together we do, many of the basics keep coming back. So we have observed the software industry and most of us in SwanSpeed also have a little bit of interest in history, history in general, including, uh, you know, how things got built in the 70s and 80s and so on. Yeah. So we know the greats, uh, software uh, programmer greats of those those times as well. Uh, So uh, we see the same ideas repackaged and come back. Of course, there are some differences. So we don't feel that, you know, there's a huge amount of advancement. Even even something like Chat GPT, right? Of course, it's an it uh, seems like a very new thing, but people and, have and, been and everybody is talking about it. Everybody is talking about it. Yes, of course, it has got. Uh, I mean, some of the results are really, uh, you know, remarkable out, outputs. The way Chat GPT works is when you give it a question, uh, it takes that and based on its store of whatever knowledge, it generates the first word or two. And based on that, it generates the next one and the yeah. next one. The next one. We call it what? Regenerative, right? Right, right. So because they do that, uh, it's no surprise that if you give it a logical question, I mean, a question on a puzzle, it, it does really badly because the answer that it finally threw out, it could have easily checked whether that answer meets the three conditions uh, asked in the question. So it actually has no understanding. In the software world, of course, new tools, all these things come up, but they're not all that new. 
and uh, the real advances that happen are actually in hardware right and you have worked with many clients um how does swan speed address or overcome this challenge or how do you address this part because uh you know when when an organization decides to bring you in obviously they are in the middle of something right and you bring in your ideas your you know concepts and and the way of doing things um but you know if 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 people are not quick enough and uh, they don't see that uh, you know this mm-hmm. that ease of adoption becomes a challenge how does how does swan speed address that yeah so um uh, the the example i was giving about this restaurant platform company there there was a huge sense of urgency because they had burnt a lot of money so there it's different because there it's just speed uh, top management which is actually just three people uh, out of them one of them just said okay we just have to do it so that's a different game uh, whereas in many many organizations like you said if they are in the middle of things uh, we we have to be patient and we have to have uh, and we do that's because that's when the actually agreement get signed uh, the top management would have a sponsor who would want an initiative to go ahead so they are our partners and we work with them as partners and uh, you know we sometimes have to be quite patient uh, technically if it's a narrow technical problem that happens quite okay but uh, some of the things you alluded to earlier like uh, uh, data a uh, data driven organization and the mindset that uh, required that may require a lot of patience so we yeah. have to treat them as a part yeah all right nirmala i'm going to switch over to you um uh, tell us about the, the road map of swan speed what does it look like for the next 3 to 5 years where is it heading where does it want to be what does it want to do uh, for technologists uh, this is uh, one of the most favorite questions because then they can let their imaginations run riot uh, in swan speed we have a very clear direction in our minds to become the most favored organization who can advise people on climate related technologies uh, especially uh, in energy uh, demand prediction additionally we already have some footing in retail forecasting and we want to be in that area as well additionally we also want to become one of the most trustworthy teams uh, for our clients for assessing the client's technology tools product process uh, the culture of course potentially followed by interventions at times uh, we want to be known for telling the way it is and we want we want our clients to love us for that what statement or elevator pitch do you leave with the audience who are watching this interview for ctos who find their uh, strategies are completely misaligned or even partly misaligned with their execution plans we can be the perfect comrade in arms for them uh, we are a bunch of technologists who have been there and done that so we know where it actually pinches and where the ruling is smooth so we can help them chart and follow the path of uh, product and business success all right that's great and uh, we're just about wrapping up sreenivas you have the last word uh, what are your final thoughts and what would you like you know to share with the audience i completely agree and i think what the nirmala said is perfect uh, however can't resist the last word so uh so when you're playing hard and still not able to score there's a little gap somewhere so where the spotter and the fixer so where the spear head so that you succeed yeah okay i like the spotter and the fixer because it's a uh, it's a direct uh, you know it's a direct punch line and i think it's uh, it's very uh, impactful thank you so much gentlemen for your time today it was a great pleasure to to talk to you uh getting the right people in to bring that outside in perspective be it advisory or consultative in the product development cycle uh swan speed is there to help so thank you once again gentlemen it was great talking to you and have a great day thank you hamid for your time thank you very much thank you